the second major layer uh, or floor in the house of the brain built from the brainstem, subcortex, and neocortex sitting on top of it all, the third floor of the house of the brain. In the second floor of the house of the brain, the amygdala and hippocampus are very close to each other and they communicate with each other. So the hippocampus, among its many functions, literally sends inhibitory signals to the, hip, to the amygdala. In effect, it puts on the brakes. It says, slow down, amygdala, chill. Also, the hippocampus signals the hypothalamus, which is close by. If you look at a picture of the brain, you'll, you can see they're all close to each other. And uh, the hypothalamus is a really ancient part of the brain, as I said. It's considered to be part of the subcortex, but it sits right on top of the brain stem. It's really close to the top of the brain stem. Um, so it's an ancient uh, part of the brain. And literally, uh, neurons go from the hippocampus to the hypothalamus that are also inhibitory, put on the brakes and signal to the hypothalamus, we've received enough cortisol. You don't need to keep telling the adrenal glands to shoot more adrenaline or cortisol into the body. Enough already. The problem is, as a detail, when people experience repeated stress, including the stress of negative emotions like anger or fear or sadness or hurt, again and again and again, the cortisol that comes with those negative emotions and stressful experiences weakens the hippocampus while simultaneously strengthening and sensitizing the amygdala, which creates a vicious cycle. In effect, and this is Mother Nature's plan, it's very effective for animals living in harsh Stone Age, you know, harsh conditions or humans living in harsh Stone Age conditions. But on the whole, this vicious cycle sensitizes and primes people to become um, ever more sensitive to life's experiences and then even more vulnerable to them the next day. That's why it's very important to practice mindfulness in part to step back from these stressful reactions. Mindfulness can act like a circuit breaker because then we step back from, it kind of, we disengage from, we disidentify from our upsets. And also, um, it's really important to repeatedly take in the good. Not uh, out of craving uh, for the good things and not out of looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, but out of a clear, tough-minded clarity about the importance of internalizing beneficial experiences, including ones of grit and gratitude and commitment to social justice and commitment to sobriety and self-regulation and all the character virtues like patience and generosity. As we have those kinds of experiences, it's really important to take in that good through the ways that I described. Have it and enjoy it. Internalize it in yourself in part to offset the brain's negativity bias, which as I put it, makes it like Velcro for bad experiences, but Teflon for, for good ones.